Hey, what is going on everyone? Big here for Serpent X Tech and today we're going to be installing Brains OS on our S19K Pro. I'm going to take you through the process now that we figured out what was causing the hang up. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go check out my previous videos. But we just need to download the toolbox. The toolbox is available for multiple operating systems, Windows, Linux, Mac, so on and so forth. If you just want to get the right one for you. Um, just open up that folder you can verify the checksum right here but you just want to download this file right click download i already have it downloaded once you have it downloaded you're going to want to open it up and i already have it on my system so let's go ahead and rock and roll you can see brains toolbox.exe if we open up that app little window is going to pop up when that window pops up your browser window will also show up in that browser window you just want to make sure that you have the correct ip range and you will see in the top left since it was initially released there's already an update a new version of toolbox is ready to be installed install now and we can just go ahead and see what the latest updates are what's going on stuff like that bug fixes and click install update it's going to go ahead and do that complete it there we go and now we should be able to restart the toolbox. Let's go ahead and get out of this. Restart the toolbox, as it says. Just make sure that if you do close out the browser tab, that you close out this little window, what looks like your typical batch miner, because otherwise you won't be able to restart and get the new update that's there. So you want to close this out and the tab, relaunch it. And then, as I mentioned, you want to specify the specific IP range. Now, I put the star at the very end here, which means it's going to scan this particular uh, section of my network, uh, multiple networks. You just want to make sure you add the range. If not, hit add new range, and then you can have multiple. If you don't want to use the star, you can put the specific IP address that the machine is on. Um, but if you don't know what that specific IP is, uh, then you can always uh, leave the star. And if you need to, just click add new range to add additional. But now we can just go ahead and save and scan. It's going to scan our network and we need to move forward with installing Brains OS. Now, personally, my recommendation is to put your machine back to stock firmware. Don't just jump from firmware to firmware. Right now on my machine, we have Lux OS installed and you can see that it's not showing up at all. Put your baby back to stock. Stock settings, stock everything. Try to restore it back to stock. And then, re you know, install whatever firmware, custom firmware you want, whether it's Brains OS, uh, Luxor or Lux OS, uh, Bitbix, uh, Vanish, whatever it might be. And as you can see, and as I just previously mentioned, we have Lux OS on this thing. So going to restore it back to stock using the micro USB connection on this particular K Pro. Each machine is different. You have a micro SD or micro USB, whatever you need to. Go to your, your manufacturer's website like Bitmain and go ahead and grab the latest firmware for your particular machine in the whatever version you need to, right? For example, if we go look for the S19K Pro, you would see here is the default firmware released on 11-18-2023. We did review that versus the out-of-the-box. And then there is the SD card. SD card basically just means micro USB. So we could go ahead and grab that because this is the AM Logic one. Right, there's the AM Logic one, the one that we want to use. And then there's a, another recovery here, I believe, for the Bagel Bone. Uh, don't quote me on that. And then this one looks like uh, a completely different one. Yeah, so CB control board. And then the middle one is for the Zinc uh, or Xilinx uh, control board and then AM Logic. So for me, I want this one. Just get the one that corresponds with your control board. And what you're basically going to do is you're going to download that zip, extract it, and then put the files onto a micro USB capable device uh, and plug it into your machine. Uh, obviously, power it down, plug it into your machine. Um, it's going to do its thing. And then you're going to reboot the machine. And then we should be able to go back to stock. Let's do that right now. So now, as you can see, we are on the stock firmware, stock settings, stock everything, which is exactly what we want. We even want the stock password. I know. Just watch my previous videos. Anyways, now that this is here, we should be able to rescan our network and find our device to install Brains OS on it. And see, now the machine is showing up, so we can select it and install Brains OS. But before we do that, what I would make a quick recommendation in or on is 
go ahead and set up your pools because those pools just got removed when you reflash or you went back to stock. If your pool's already in there, something I want you to note is that not all pools play well with one another, right? If I'm gonna be using a Brains OS, I might not wanna be mining to a Luxar pool or maybe it won't work as well with NiceHash. I've seen Brains OS work well with NiceHash, like especially ASIC Boost. So that shouldn't be a problem. Just know that some pools might not play well with others. And then you just want to follow your pool, your mining pools, you know, guidelines. Like, what is your user ID? Some people just want uh, your, you know, wallet address, dot your worker name. Others want a user slash, you know, a, a, a different name, you know, dot worker name, whatever. And then the password can be whatever you want it to be. So just go ahead and set your pools up first, right? If we just copy all of these through, then save it i we should have no problems when the miner reboots after it installs brains os just set yourself up for for success rather than failure just to uh, alleviate any conflicts it might have connecting to another pool so now that that's saved up we're gonna go ahead and click install brains os there's plenty of good things we can do in here before we even install brains os you could see here normal mode sleep mode low power mode concurrency uh we can set performance mode which is these three right here, uh, DPS, uh, enable dynamic performance scaling, power step, where we could set uh, the minimum of one to a 1,000, uh, minimum power limit, max of 5,000. Uh, again, the stock power supplies can probably push up to 5,000, but honestly, I will probably do like more like 4,400, 4,500, somewhere in there. Uh, one device of one will be skipped. These are unsupported or running unsupported firmware because the firmware is not on yet. But these are just really cool things that we can do. It doesn't see the pools in here because I would have to rescan it again because we just did it manually through here. Um, and if you do need to rescan, you can always go back to device management, save and scan, and let it rescan your network. And whatever changes you just did, uh, select the device, and then we're going to go ahead and click Install Brains OS, which we're going to do right now. So we select the device here, the What's Miner is not supported. Click Install, right? It's going to go with the latest available. It's doing a compatibility checklist. Install Brains OS, and there we go. We're on our way. Top right, we can see the percentage, 11%, you know, 20%, whatever it might be. Let that rock and roll, and we'll move on to the next part. All right, I just heard the machine ramp down, at least the fans, as the machine is restarting. Uh, we're almost completed and almost done i would say overall it should take about four to five minutes per machine making mass deployment on multiple asic miners a lot easier for larger operations and now we're presented with the login page now again because you use stock settings on your asic miner it will be the exact same stock login information while i do encourage people to always change the default password in this case, and as I mentioned in my previous videos, for both Lux OS and Brains OS, you want to just leave it the stock setting. So go ahead and type in your password or username and password for your mining. And you would see one of the reasons why I always advise to change your passwords. Google's even warning you, this password sucks, stop doing it. But um, we're complimented by a great dashboard that Brains, the Brains team has provided to us. Uh, I really like them. I mean, we've been using these since uh, the early days of ASIC mining. Dashboard is really cool. Uh, we can configure a lot of things here. So let's run through it. Top left, we got the dashboard where we got a nice little graph here. We can see each hash board. We can see each pool. We can see, uh, you know, the uptime, the tuner status right now. Tuner is not running. We can edit the performance. We can edit the pools. And we can configure hash boards, right? So let's go dashboard, configuration. There's the pools, there's the performance. We can set the power target. Let's say, for example, we wanna run at, you know, 20, let's, let's say instead of the 2760, which is stock, as you can see for the S19K Pro, let's say we wanna run at 2500 flat. We wanna save a little bit more juice. Uh, we wanna enable dynamic performance scaling. Okay, cool. Decrease power target value, uh, and it, it will step down or step up. Minimum power target, it will tell you what the, uh, the default is here, 1675. Shutdown when minimum power target is reached. 
shutdown duration for how many hours. And we can actually disable and enable hash boards. So if we've only wanted to run two hash boards for whatever reason, we can certainly do that as well. But you can see if we hit save and apply here, there we go. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna change anything on the the power target value and the minimum power target just yet. Some fine tuning will come in the future. Uh, temperature control auto, so that's leaving the fans on auto and letting it do its thing. Now the dangerous temperature here is different than Luxor or Lux OS. The highest you could set it to was 75. This one it's 90, so it's letting the bit main get a little bit hotter on brains compared to Lux OS. But with proper management and airflow, you should be fine. Target temperature is about the same between the two. I bumped that up to 65 since I'm in a hot environment. Hot temperature, 80 is about right. Max temperature or dangerous temperature is 90. And then we could tell the device, hey, you know what, dude? We're an immersion liquid. So same thing on Lux OS. We could turn that on. Uh, I, I obviously, after moving, removing all the fans and the power supply on the unit, and then good to go. And we could even turn down the number of fans. Hey, don't worry about it. You know, if I put it in immersion mode, it's not going to worry about looking for fans. It's going to be okay. But if we only had two fans, we could tell that, hey, I, I only have two to run with, you know, work on two. Or if I want all four to work or the machine not to run unless all four are running, I could tell that as well. Hit save or save and apply. And then under system, obviously, we could change the theme. My theme is defaulting to dark mode because of my system. And in here, change the password to whatever you want. Again, do not leave it stock, but I understand why larger operations do this. We talked about that again in a previous video. Change the name to whatever you want. We could just say, you know, X19K, uh, change host name. That might reboot the device, that might not. It depends. Network, uh, we can go static. I like going static, but you can leave it on auto or DHCP. And then logs. We always love logs here on this channel. Uh, if you're a fan of logs, then you, you should uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, you get all the good information that you need and ways to where, you know, I liked Lux OS and even the stock firmware because it allowed me to download the logs manually. Why is there no option for that here? Quick actions. Yeah. I mean, I can copy it and export it, but there's no button to just straight up download. I would like to see that brains team uh, maybe in a future update. Maybe we could just, you know, have, you know, download logs for today or yesterday just by dates. That would be really cool to see. But that's the basic configuration. Now on the dashboard, what this bad boy is going to try to do is it's going to try to run um, an auto-tune based upon the power target that I set, 2500. And then I can go even further by decreasing the power target value. Uh, defaults 300. I could set it to a minimum of one or max of 1000. Uh, and then the minimum power target. Um, you know, I 1671. Uh, so 1671 watts is the minimum that I would want this machine to go. I would say 2000 is really the minimum. I could set that here if I want to as well. And then I could tell the system, hey, shut down when the minimum power targets reach. If we get that low, the system is going to shut down for three hours or its system is going to shut down for whatever. And you can see it's zero to 99. So I can set that for one hour. I, I can't change it to minutes or anything like that, but I'm just gonna leave that off because I don't think we're gonna get any near there, anywhere near there. But Brains OS has the, the auto tuning built into it. Lux OS does not have it quite yet, as I mentioned in the previous video, but stay tuned. Um, I, I, I'm expecting great things from both teams to continue to make uh, optimizations and updates for these newer miners, whether it's the S19K Pro or the S21 and various revisions or versions out there. But that's pretty much it for this video. Very easy to install, very easy to manage multiple ASICs. And because the auto tuning is available right now on Brains OS, that gives it a little bit of an edge against the Lux OS firmware, but I do love the Lux OS GUI as well. And there's some features on there that I prefer compared to brain. So pick and choose what's best for you, your setup, your configuration. Bear in mind, not all miners are the same. It's gonna depend on your thermal environment or your thermals and environmental conditions, silicon lottery, all that good stuff. But it is still good to uh, get off that stock firmware and optimize and make your miner more efficient. But thank you so much for stopping by. Please do me a favor on the way out. 
hit the like button make sure to get subscribed hit the notification bell to stay up to date as well as check out some of the links in the description to help support the channel and what we do here including links to other additional information like the uh academy from brains or brains academy um and uh yeah unlike lux os we didn't have to install a firmware we just had to make sure that our device could talk to a particular port um or url and port and that is that was done if you i'm at i'm at home on my network and i i do, i have it locked down but i don't have it locked down that bad so you and at home maybe a small scale farmer shouldn't have an issue maybe the larger farms because of their networks a little bit more uh secure maybe they need to do a little something something to enable this specific url and port to talk to this device but you shouldn't have to really worry about that if you're on my level small scale or below but anyways you all have a wonderful day take care i'll catch you next one and appreciate your time Thank you.